everyone, Uncle Jess here. Today I'm gonna to be doing a Q&A style video here on the Elgu Jupiter, this mammoth resin 3D printer. I reached out to a bunch of you on Facebook groups, uh, here on YouTube and some other platforms asking what questions you have about the machine. And I'm gonna be trying to get through as many of those as I possibly can. There's timestamps along the bottom, but first, I did have a quick update on the video that I posted yesterday with my initial look. I caused a whole lot of unnecessary confusion. I stated that my unit does not have the mono screen. The production units will have a mono 6K resolution screen. My unit has a 6K mono screen installed. And for whatever reason, I thought this did not have the mono screen on it. So that's my huge apologies on that. But regardless, let's get right into this. So the first set of questions are gonna be really just general focus questions about the machine. So how's the noise compared to other large resin 3D printers? I have to say, this is probably the most quiet, large resin 3D printer that I own. And I have a good number of them here in my studio. It's really quiet compared to a lot of the others out there. How are the print speeds on the unit? In general, the larger you go with your printers, the slower it's gonna to take to print. However, I am pretty impressed to say that the Loot Studio prints that I went off and did on the Jupiter here for my video uh, were, took about six hours to print and then I reprinted those running almost the exact same settings here on the Saturn and it also took about six hours. But I was impressed with seeing how fast it was printing on this larger machine. I was able to print a lot more of those 75 millimeter miniatures on the Jupiter compared to the Saturn which has a smaller build volume. A lot of you also want to see a size comparison between the different Elgu machines. So here is the Jupiter, the Saturn, the Mars 3, and the Mars 2 Pro. A lot of you also were asking about build volume comparisons between the Jupiter and those other machines. So I made a 3D printable model of the different build volumes. So here is the Jupiter, here is the Saturn, and here is the Mars 2 Pro. As you can see, there's quite a bit of difference between the build volumes of these machines. A lot of you wanted to know what my print settings or the profile was that I was using for the Jupiter. Elgu did pass that along to me. That's what I was using. So I'll post that on screen here so you can get an idea of the uh, the settings that I was using in Cheetubox. And by the way, yes, I was using Cheetubox Basic. I don't have access to Pro because they don't have a Pro version available for Mac yet. Can you do Vroom with the Jupiter? In theory, yes. And I will be for sure checking that out and seeing how fast I can push this. Just keep in mind that when you use the Vroom settings, you potentially are gonna wear through your FEP sheets faster or just in general, wear out the printer faster. How is the print cleanup on the Jupiter compared to the other machines? You're gonna need a lot more space because you have a much larger vat or the build plate when it comes to cleaning off prints from the units there, from the machine. And as of right now, there's really not a larger wash and cure unit that will fit prints that directly come off of this. So I'll be doing a separate video on how I typically clean my larger resin 3D prints and showing that off separately. Uh, but I know Elgu is looking into the possibility of making a larger wash and cure unit. Also, all the prints I did print off this machine, I cleaned in the Mercury X bundle. Is Chitu Box required? Yeah, it's a Chitu based board that's being used in the machine. So you are gonna have to, at some point, use Chitu Box Basic or Chitu Box Pro with the machine when it comes to actually slicing the files that go on the printer, unless something changes between now and the time that the units officially ship. And this isn't just a limitation with the Elga machines. This is a lot of the other manufacturers out there as well that are using the Chitu based boards. What are the packaging dimensions for the unit? I don't know, unfortunately. Unfortunately, I think that's something that we'll have to wait and see and get more updates from Elgu once that's made available and they have all of the final builds and designs in place. How many 32 millimeter miniatures can I fit on the build plate of this machine? The answer is 22 comfortably along with their bases for those miniatures on that massive build plate. Here's one that I've gotten a lot of questions about. Can you print a full size helmet on this machine in one piece? No unless you have a small child head or just a very small head, you're more than likely gonna have to print a full size helmet for an adult person that would need to wear that in two to three pieces, again, depending on the file that you're gonna be working with. Here's an example of a Court of Owls mask that I designed, it's just a face mask, and I was able to print this directly here on the front side of the build plate. And that was a 14 hour print. Is the integrated light source bright enough for you to be able to see your prints while you're actively working in it? Yeah, it works fantastic, really happy with it. Obviously, I'm not a big fan of the L lights. I've stated that previously, and Elgu has mentioned that they're looking into uh, cooler light options. Again, the big 
question here is I don't want any of your lights to affect any of the resins that you're working with. I have very bright LEDs all inside the studio space here with lots of resin 3D printers, typically without their cases on it. And I have zero issues with curing resin because those are so close to the prints. Elgu is going to be testing that before they eventually release it. Is the build quality really stiff? Is it solid? Yeah, I would say this is so far. I'm very happy with the overall uh, build quality of this machine. The rails seem really solid. Everything's really solid in here. Nothing's loose or wiggling. I didn't have to go through and retighten anything at this point. Can you install a door detector that when you open the door, it automatically pauses your print? I, I don't know, maybe in theory. Right now, it's just magnetically holding the door in place. In theory, you could. I would personally never want that. I just would rather pause from the menu here. I rarely like to pause my prints because every time I pause, and do something, I'll typically end up with some fine layer lines where I pause the print. And that's not just with this printer, it's with any resin 3D printer. Elgu mentioned that there is gonna be a potential extension up to 500 millimeters for this printer. Uh, as far as I can tell on the top side here, there are panels that you could remove. So you could in theory build up higher. I'm not sure exactly how all that would work. Uh, there's some creative engineers over at the Elgu team that I'm sure would be able to solve that and figure it out or probably already have a design in mind for that. Can this door be installed on the other side? Currently, no, there's no option for that. However, I did pass over that comment to the Elgu team to see if that's something that they would be able to figure out a way to do. There's some design elements here and how it's it's locking in place that would, if that were to happen, would need to change. It is what it is at this point. Where's the USB slot located? It's on the side of the machine along with the power switch and the power supply. Does it come with the same style USB stick as the other Yelugu machines? Yes, it does. Does the Jupiter beep when you start a print and the build plate touches the bottom of the Z? Yes, it does. What's my favorite and least favorite thing about the machine? That's a tough one, but I would say my favorite is the auto feeding resin function. It's just absolutely amazing. This is a, what, 13, 14 hour print here that I did and use that and the vat is still completely full after printing that. And what's the least favorite thing that I like? It's probably gonna be the yellow lights. I've already stated that enough. Uh, for me, it's a personal thing. I make lots of videos, post things on Instagram and take photos. Uh, using those yellow lights, it just makes everything not look as good as it should. How easy is it to remove a build plate with a print on it? I would say it's pretty easy. You just loosen that lever and you can pull the build plate right out. How heavy is the build plate? It's three pounds and 13 ounces. Can you hold the build plate with one hand? Yes, you can. And I don't have the largest of hands. Is it easy to remove the prints from the build plate? Now, I would say in general, yeah, it's as easy as it can be. Depends on how flat of a surface you're gonna be printing with so that you can get the scraper under there. These larger build plates, in my opinion, are a perfect example of why I like using those flex plates. That's why I have them on the Saturn, et cetera, or the, my, my Phenom. I definitely will be looking at installing a larger flex plate on this machine here in the future. Did I need to re-level the build plate frequently? No, I think I only re-leveled it once initially, ran a whole bunch of prints, and then we did a lot of troubleshooting to see if I had an issue with, before we knew it was the screen, uh, with me re-leveling the build plate multiple times. So that's only why I re-leveled it multiple times. Uh, outside of that, it's really rock solid once you get it leveled. Is the build plate smooth or sandblasted? It's smooth and mine is all sorts of scuffed up for me removing prints already. After a print's completed, does the build plate fully lift up to the top? Yeah, I believe it does. Mine's sitting up there right now, uh, but I believe that's a setting that you can configure in the G-code of the, uh, the firmware for the machine. Let's talk about my favorite feature of the machine, that auto-filling vat. Uh, how well does it work? I think it works exceptionally well. According to Elgu, it uses atmospheric pressure to keep the resin perfectly aligned. So as you filled up the vat with resin and then added in the extra tank there, it's just gonna keep feeding it in as resin is being used. And like I mentioned before, this huge face mask here that I printed in 13, 14 hours, the vat is still completely full thanks to that auto filler. Does it prevent resin from overflowing from the vat? I have been letting this sit here for at least a solid 12 hours now and it hasn't moved an inch. So it's not gonna just completely overflow and pour out. Here's a great one. Will the cap fit on non Elgu bottles? And I have tested this out on a number of different bottles that it obviously fits on the Elgu bottles. It will not fit on the Soriatek bottles. It will fit on some of these anti-cubic bottles. It will fit on the Epax bottles. 
I had this Shine Sing resin and it works with that. And some of the frozen resin bottles, it also is compatible with that. My plan is that I'm gonna be saving some of these larger bottles of resin so that if I do have some resin that isn't going to be compatible with that, I have a way to actually store it. I'll just transfer it over into this bottle and then use the feeding mechanism. Can the auto feeder get blocked up? I don't know, not that I'm aware of. I haven't run into any issues with it so far. Uh, you could potentially accidentally cure the resin that's in there. I believe Elgu is looking in the option for additional caps to be either sold or included with the orders. One of the big ones was how much resin does the vat currently hold? Up to the max fill line, it is 1.75 liters of resin. So it's one full bottle of resin plus about 75% of another larger bottle of resin. Plus you still have the auto feeding function in the back there that's gonna hold a full another liter of resin. How heavy is the vat? It's seven pounds, seven ounces. Does the vat have feet that protect the FEP like the Saturn? It doesn't have feet, but it's got a whole raised platform that it's sitting on. So yes, it does have a way to protect the FEP. Uh, again, the designs for that and the screen might all change before it officially goes into production later this year. Have I seen any warping on the FEP sheet since using it? No, I've really not seen any issues with the FEP sheet so far. I've had zero issues with it so far, which is fantastic. And it is that NFEP sheet, which was the next one. Is Do I see any major difference between regular FEP sheets and the NFEP? I guess it's a little bit more durable. It's supposed to be a little bit more durable. I know a lot of manufacturers are switching over to that. It seems like it works better. Is it noticeably harder to remove the vat from this machine compared to, let's say, the Mars or the Saturn? Uh, I mean, it is certainly heavier and it's bulkier. Thankfully, it's got those two big handles. One thing that's a little bit tricky is when you're needing to dump all of the resin back out and back into a bottle. That can be a fun time and experience, especially holding that heavy thing up. And it's certainly not the largest or heaviest vat that I've had to work with. And thankfully, these have handles on them. Does the printer or the vat have a heating mechanism? As of right now, no, and there's nowhere to plug one in either, uh, but that is something that Elgu is looking into and if it's even possible for them to build something like that into the unit. The last couple questions around the filter units here. Uh, so how well do they work? I think they work as well as I can tell. <laughs> I, mean, I don't typically work with harsh resins or, or fumes from resins. I try to stay away from those as much as possible just because I don't want that in my space. I try to leave the windows as much as I can cracked open or have air circulating through here. These certainly help and it's great that they're just a USB powered and plugged directly into the unit. Do the original filters fit? And just for comparison's sake, here is the original filters that Elbu sells versus the one that's gonna plug into the Jupiter here. Obviously a good bit larger here for this one that plugs in directly to it. But if you have these wireless smaller ones, they will fit in the back of the unit. Is there an ability to turn on or off the filtration unit when it's plugged into the machine? No, as soon as you plug it in, it starts working. When you unplug it, it stops working. Again, Elgu might change that design before it's officially released. Maybe there's a power button on the unit here to turn it on or turn it off. I did want to say a special thank you to Elgu for sponsoring today's video. If you're interested in the Elgu Jupiter and haven't already pre-ordered it over on Kickstarter, I'll have links down below where you can find more information about the machine and the Kickstarter that's still up and running for the next, I don't know, nine to 10 days or so once this video publishes. I'll be making more content with this machine here over the upcoming weeks, especially once I get the new screen in place. I'm really excited to print some really, really large things on this machine and have a good number of files already prepped and ready to go for that. Hey, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now. Also, if you still have more questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll see how many of those I can try to get to.